season. She has hardy skin. So good candidate for this. <laughs> and you're not Oh, I have gluten intolerance. So you're going to be fine. Okay. <laughs> you're going to make it. I forgot. So this is kind lymphatic cleansing oil. So it's a hydrophilic oil with grape seeds. So it's full of antioxidants. We're going to do a pre-cleanse. So she is just relaxing. She's closing her eyes. She's just letting her skin respond. And what we're doing is massaging this in for a couple of reasons. We're going to soften the skin, we're going to clean the skin. So it breaks apart dirt, debris, anything that's on the skin, makeup, sunscreen. We just want to really work it into the skin because you're softening it, so you're prepping it. You're getting to know what's under the skin. So like, let's say I was going to do a lot of extractions, I would feel like all that congestion. But because it's hydrophilic, it's water loving, and even the most acne skin can benefit from this oil. I use it every night. And for those of you that's been in my class before, you know, I've shared with you, like, I break out if you look at me wrong. Like, I would be one big pimple if I didn't use it. But it's how you remove it. That's the key. Get it off the skin. You have to apply it really well, really work it into the skin, and then remove it really, really well. And you can have fun when you're working it into the skin. Like, you can make it into a little, you know, massage endeavor here. You can just kind of make her feel relaxed and comfortable. And if you're doing a facial where you're going to run out of time to actually do a massage step, just do your massage at the beginning. But of course, go according to what your teachers say. So, like, don't tell them what Tammy said. Tammy said that. Tammy said a lot. I don't know, the eyelash again. There we go. You said this is primarily grape seed. So oil? It has grape seed in it. So it it's avocado oil, oh. safflower oil. Grape seed oil, jojoba oil. It smells, it smells wonderful. And you can use it as a hydrator as well. So it can be a massage medium that will soak into the skin. You can use it as a pre cleanse. The nice thing also is it doesn't stain sheets, towels, clothing. So if you use it to do your hand massage and the client still has a little residue left over and they don't want you to wipe it off with a warm towel and it gets on their clothes, it'll just come off when they when they wash their clothes. So for example, When you wet it, it turns into a lotion. It turns white. So you can actually visibly see. Emulsifies. Exactly. Good work, good work. So, and when you emulsify it, you want to really make sure that you work. Sorry, I didn't use that in there. Really want to work it into the skin. You can go right over the eyelashes. No, they have fake eyelashes. Unless they're wanting them to come off, don't go over the eyelashes because it's very good at removing eyelashes. Very good at removing makeup. You can actually brush it onto the lashes as a lash conditioner. You can use it as a hair treatment. It doesn't change the oil in your car for you, but it does do a lot of other stuff. It's amazing. If you use it as a hair treatment, you would use it similar to the seaweed gel mask. Do you have the seaweed gel mask? Yeah. Okay. So you would either do it on clean hair or dirty hair, either way but you would brush it into the hair, really get it into the scalp. So this is scalp treatment as well. Let it stay on for at least 30 minutes and then you can just rinse it off. And see how it's turning white right here? The same thing, it's just going to come off your hair and then it leaves it really nice and silky, but just get it off really, really well. You don't need to use uh, shampoo or anything afterwards, but you can. So. Now we'll use our little four by fours and remove the rest of the residue. Now one thing about the mask that we're doing is because it is a hardening mask and it's a pour on mask, it's gonna darken her world for quite a while, you do need to do it in a place that you can control the lighting. Otherwise, it's very uncomfortable for the client when you remove the mask because it's like going from a movie theater into a police car spotlight. Like you're just like deer in a headlight. And that can ruin even the hardiest person's relaxation. You see it comes off everything. So a little later today we'll when we're done with the mask we'll we'll have you dim the lights in here. Are you just using SD wipes to remove them? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah I'm not a huge fan of sponges. I don't feel like they get everything off. I feel like I just continue to make a yeah we were just talking about mask. that this morning actually. Yeah. I'm not talented with them. Actually, people love sponges. They're really talented. I need a tutorial on how to use a sponge. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not just me.
But it looks like you have more than one in each hand. One SD wipe in each hand. Just one? Oh, it looks so thick. Yeah. These are really great ones. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not These are really Oh, it's, yeah, it is, it's thicker. It's definitely thicker than what we have. So I just put it Oh, it's almost like a it. but you can also cotton. Like, yeah. use it it's, it's almost like, like a mummy. sheet of cotton. You're gonna mummy a mask like this. So you can it's do it all the way out and they're stretchy. Yeah, they don't rip that easily. So that's nice. And then you can just rinse them and keep using them. I typically only use about three for the full facial. But you can continue to rinse them out. I wonder if that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. It feels like someone's trying to open the door. Hello? It is haunted. These are super soft. Yeah. Let's see what brand. I don't personally like it. They just think I don't Tell me what brand are those ST ones? I like them much better. Well, it's called Webrol. Yeah, they actually are on your order form. So. Oh, okay. Sea potato doesn't make them, but they sell them. But they sell them. Yeah. So. Oh. Yeah, they're on the bottom, the back side of it that has the embrosion, the sea enzyme uh, products. They're on the bottom section of that. Not, not under marketing materials, but under something else, supplies or. Okay. So, another little trick of the trade for those of you that are familiar with the cleansing milk. So I like to use the cleansing milk like this on a cloth. Some people do the cleansing milk slightly really cool, uh, just on their fingers, and they'll mix it with water. But I like to wipe it on and then wipe it off. You can do this instead of the hydrophilic oil grapeseed that we used a little bit ago, or you can do this in addition to the hydrophilic oil grapeseed. But basically, this is just one way of applying it and then removing it. Just as an example. And so that way you can keep it really clean. Because the thing with cleansing milks, sometimes they're, they're really slippery. And if you add water to them, they literally like slip off the face. So you have to be kind of savvy with the application and removal of them so that you get the full benefit. And again, you can use water. Or you can just wipe it off. Another option as a cleanse would be the herbal film cleanser. Oops, that's the herbal gel. Just kidding. Well, we'll do the herbal gel because we'll, de we'll decrease your skin. So herbal gel. Do you have this one here? The blue one? Let's pass it around then. There you go. So this is a cleanser that is great for acne skin. It's great for decreasing the skin before dermaplaning, microdermabrasion, any sort of peel. Um, just remember for peels, you need to prep the skin in advance to make sure that there's no pigmentation problem. So sometimes that's prepping them with extra hydration, sometimes for the three to four weeks or two months or whatever it is beforehand. For peels, you'll need to prep them with a hydroquinone, depending on the level of peel. If you're under the guise of a medical doctor, you're going to have different rules and requirements than you would if you're working on your own as an esthetician because you can't necessarily have access to all of the, that type of percentage of active ingredients, in California at least. So, anyway, this is the herbal foam cleanser. So we're degreasing the skin like that. And then you can rinse out your little four by fours again. So you kind of do like a triple cleanse then? So right now I'm just kind of explore, showing you some of the different cleansers. You okay. can do a triple okay. cleanse, especially if you're doing it as a peel prep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, absolutely. Each of the different cleansers have different, different sort of methods of action, you know, as to why you would use them. <laughs> yeah, the cleansing milk was more just kind of a demonstration, just okay. to show you another way. So that's another way we can pre-cleanse, is with the cleansing milk. Mm -hmm. what the you, cleansing milk, do you, you don't have to add water to it at all? Or? You can, but you don't have to. So, like when we just did it, and just on the cloth, yeah, applied it and removed it. But you can it. apply and remove it with damp 4 by 4s or with dry 4 by 4s What do you use for a moisturizer? Yeah. Your skin's really nice. Oh, me personally? Yeah. Mostly serums. Serums, okay. And then I'll use like a moisturizing tinted sunscreen. Okay. Like, because of the guys here. Oh, um, you guys do have a sunscreen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's about an SPF 20. Okay. Environmental protection wise, but it doesn't have the SPF ranking on it. And the old labels we did, that would go back to. Yeah, so it's under. 
It's on the Dr. Schwab side. It's called Flawless Tinted Moisturizer. Okay. And there's a light tint, medium tint, and a dark tint. I brought some of them here. I want to know how your decollete looks so good. Oh. <laughs> Just tell me. Um, I think it's you use all the same products in your face that you do on your chest, too. For how long? Um, well, you. I'm, I'm a recovering like sun baby, so exactly. as soon as you have that awareness, just start doing it. That's it. Yeah, just keep That's keep it. doing it, and it'll 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 help to reverse and to prevent. Wow. But I also just did like it's it is a little sun damaged right now because I just did the three day walk uh, for the breast cancer three day walk down in San Diego. That's a lot of sun. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, was, I mean, you look so even and like so seriously. Yeah, I was talking about your skin. I'm like, okay, that makes yeah, sense. Oh, because yeah. we were talking about it. <laughs> 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 this was a lot of <laughs> Now it's not a secret anymore. No secrets. Secrets out. We've bonded. <laughs> yeah, if, if you guys ever watch like, Real Housewives or anything like that, yeah. and you know, Real Housewives, Orange County, or whatever, but whenever they have the reunion, you always see that the ladies look so tight and perfect up here, and then like down here, it's like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So you gotta do that full. Yes. Like, you can always exactly. have the hands, the hands and the neck. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to do the pumpkin yeah. enzyme peel. We could prep our skin with a chemical peel, right? But because we're doing the hypothermal mask, and I've not worked with this lovely, lovely candidate before, we're not going to do a chemical today. But that is an option. Do you want me to do oh, yeah. the aloe vera peel for one minute first, and then the pumpkin? Yes. We could try it. <laughs> Show it. Show it. Okay. Oh, yeah. All about it. All right. So we prepped your skin with the we degreased it with the herbal foam cleanser or the herbal gel cleanser, right? The blue one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Degreased it. Another way to degrease the skin is to use the tea tree prep lotion. So just as a demo, I hope we're doing on time, by the way. We're good. Now. There's a clock right there. Oh, that's nice. I always go over. So, so tea tree prep. Everybody's familiar with tea tree prep lotion? No. No. Okay. So tea tree prep lotion, it's a very, just forgive the bottles too. They go, they rummage around in the car when I'm driving up to the schools and stuff. So they're not so pretty right now, but a little bit cold. It is a, called a lotion. Lotions are the same things as toners, same things as tonics. So it's something that's going to balance the skin. It will pH balance the skin. It will help to decrease the skin again. It cleans the skin. This one in particular is actually great for heat rash as well. It's great for irritations of the skin. You can clean your makeup brushes in it. Just to use as a sanitizer. It's not a sterilizer, but it helps to prep the skin. It's instead of using acetone, which can be super ir irritating to the skin before chemical peels. So think of the Dr. Schwab line, but this helps you kind of figure out where this fits in. They're pharmaceutical grade. So you have medical grade, pharmaceutical grade, cosmetic grade. So typically at a drugstore, that's your cosmetic grade. You have your department store, that's usually cosmetic grade as well. If it's something the pharmacist gives you, it can be either pharmaceutical grade or medical grade, depending on who wrote the prescription. And then if you get it from the doctor's office, plastic surgeon, dermatologist, typically that's medical grade. This product flows between the doctor's office and the patient. So if somebody's on a really strong medical grade program, the doctor may say, let's bring in some of Dr. Schwab, because we need to balance out the skin a little bit. We need to restore the skin so it can be healthier while they're going through this transformative process. Or they'll put them on this, they'll take them off of something else. So it definitely is kind of a partner with things in the medical world. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like in my back bar, I can choose whatever I want. And I have about six different lines back there. And this is one of the main ones that I have. So I treat with this at a medical facility where I also have access to medical grade products. So it goes hand in hand. We kind of have an idea of where this falls and stuff. Okay, now aloe vera peel. Get up. There it is. Okay, so it's a gel peel. I'm gonna put a lot in here. If when I pass this around, you put it on your skin, you need to promise me that you will remove it within five minutes. Don't put it on your face. If you remove, put it on your face, please remove it within about a minute. You have to neutralize it. It's not self-neutralizing. So take a cleanser from a Purell stick this on the end here. So if you do put this on your hand as you're, as this is going around, please, please, please neutralize it in a few minutes. 
What do you neutralize it with? So a cleanser. Any you can use cleanser. any cleanser except for one, like not the grapefruit cleanser. This is just the rescue cream lip therapy. We're going to protect her lip area while we do the, the treatment. And then she may lift because she just had a cinnamon peel. She's going to put the rescue cream lip therapy right out in this area because that's an area that people tend to lift. What does lift mean? So that's where the chemical will get in and actually um, not ablate the skin, but it will exfoliate it to the point where it lifts up and then you'll have a raw area and then it'll scab. So around this area where it's really sensitive, like the skin will kind of lift and then if you go over it and you're removing it, the skin will actually roll off. Have you ever like done something where you like the skin all of a sudden starts to roll off and you have kind of a wound that takes a little bit, it's like a flat kind of scab afterwards. And so chemicals can do that. Enzymes, not as much, but chemicals definitely can lift. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just on some of the sensitive areas in her skin, just putting a little bit of the rescue cream. It's the lip rescue therapy. If you want to use any, just make sure you put it on your hand, not directly on your lips. Same thing as rescue cream, just in a convenient dispenser. Can we put it on our lips and keep it? <laughs> okay, so. With the aloe peel, you can apply it with a brush. You can apply it with Q-tips, as you would a glycolic peel. Just make sure that you apply it evenly and then remove it evenly. And what is the benefit of doing the aloe peel before the pumpkin? Because as a chemical peel that's for brightening, it's going to enhance the effects of the, of the pumpkin peel. And this one is a brightening and fine lines and wrinkles type of anti-aging peel. So we're going to do it on her neck and her chest, and then we're going to remove very quickly. So this is only going to stay on for just a little bit. Okay. So it's lactic and malic acid, 23%. to neutralize it. You want to give it about a minute on there when you're doing it as a preparatory exfoliant. So we don't want to leave it on for too long. So right now she's starting to feel some itchiness and she's starting to really feel the activity. She may even feel more activity as I remove it. Why is that? Because you're spreading it and massaging it in. You are, but it's also because remember what chemical peels do? Oh yeah. They burst the dust zones, right? Yeah. So we're actually removing those skin cells. And so the skin now has a, a heightened level of sensitivity, right? Now, if you were to do many of these, you would want to wear gloves, but I'm only doing one right now, so. But your hands just slip to mine after a while. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the back. So. Yeah. Is still just the aloe vera? And, and so this is, totally is the... safe to do on the decollete. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the decollete is too sensitive. Mm -hmm. The neck and the eye area and the upper lip are all very similar in terms of the fabric of the skin. So you'll find that they'll respond very similarly. Now, if you want to remove it well off of all of these areas. So, so how many minutes total for the aloe So for her, I left it on just for about a minute. Okay. Basically, I applied it and then I prepared to remove it. So this is the herbal foam cleanser. Oh, yeah, we're, neutralizing we're neutralizing after it. After a minute. Okay. But you said any cleanser will make any cleanser that doesn't have the active ingredient of an alpha hydroxy acid. So you would not want to use the grapefruit cleanser or anything that's like a, an acne cleanser with salicylic in it because that you're just adding more alpha or beta hydroxy to the skin instead of neutralizing it and removing it. stops to be really, really warm, okay. and then we're going to want to remove it. Yeah. Like her neck especially is warm. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now 
now we want to use our 4x4s, or you can use a room temperature towel, but please don't use a hot towel when you're removing any neutralization of a chemical peel. You don't want to add more heat to it. And be, be gentle with the skin. Thank you. It's not necessarily the full exfoliant that we're going to be doing for the treatment. That's just one option. So that's just a way to demonstrate how to do the aloe peel. You can do the aloe peel with, uh, um, what do you call Q-tips in the world of uh, facial swabs? Cotton swabs. Cotton, 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 tip, cotton, swabs. cotton tip swabs. Yeah, I know. Q-tips. <laughs> a brand name, right? Like Kleenex, facial tissue. It's so funny because people call them Q-tips more than they call them cotton. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like band-aids, like mm -hmm. you don't call them band-aids. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. You never know. Oh, so if you weren't doing the pumpkin peel next, how long could you do the aloe vera peel maximum? Um, maximum you could do it up to seven minutes. Okay. We recommend three to five. But under this particular mask that we're doing today, the HT mask, yeah. we don't want to do a chemical peel underneath it for any more than a minute. Okay. Like this is because the heat, you, you're doing the, you're making a mess. Does anybody have a facial tissue? Do we have facial tissue somewhere? Kleenex? Tissue. Just like a tissue. So you just on facial tissue. We're like, what do you Do you want me to get some paper towels? Oh, or is it? No, I just need to, to be able to, to dry off your skin so that we can tell if it's completely neutralized or not. Do you feel any activity anywhere? Is it, where's the activity mostly? Uh, on the side of the neck and the eyebrows and the sides of the forehead, like around the towel. Yes. And around the mouth. Neutralize it again. So she's still feeling activity. Now I'm gonna tickle my nose. <laughs> so we're going to go through and do another cleanse. We just needed to get all the moisture off to make sure that there wasn't excess product. Now another thing that's important for you to consider is when you're doing uh, any sort of a peel, keep the eyes covered. I uncovered her eyes so you could see where I was going with the peel. But please, 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 that was just for demonstration purposes today. That was not in general what I want you to do. So keep the eyes covered whenever you do any sort of a chemical peel. So what are you putting on now? So this is a cleansing milk to further neutralize those areas that were irritated because we want to make sure everything is neutralized before we continue on. So you said eyebrows, mm -hmm. sides of face, nose, tip of nose, and around it on the side of the neck. vitamin C's, anything like that. So those are all important questions to ask too when you're doing peelings and you're interested in peels. Make sure you find out exactly what the person is using. Sometimes they don't always know, but if the skin frosts or if they're particularly um, reactive, they may be using something that has more of an active ingredient than they realize. Because um, typically you can be very very intentional and predictable with, with the products. Like they'll respond as you intend them to. But if for some reason they don't, or someone's like, oh, that's really, really intense, that's often because it's, they're you know, using something, their skin has been sensitized in some way. It's weaker in whatever way, and compromised. What would you say for someone wanting to do this who tends to have erythema, or just a sensitive skin type in general, but really wants to do something like this, a procedure like this? Uh, so when the skin tends to be weaker like that, I would say to strengthen it with the sensitive serum, the sensitive moisturizer, really trying to use things that will drop the inflammation and, and get it to a place where it'll be able to handle I mean, more of a treatment. I think that with, with the erythema aspect, having aloe as the buffer 
for this particular peel because it's an aloe vera peel. So you have your malic, malic and lactic acid, 23%, but it's buffered in aloe. So it's something that is going to be easier for the skin to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, like even though her skin is very robust, she said, it is thinner too. Mm -hmm. So she's going to have a stronger reaction just because it's thinner skin. Would you say that if you treated your skin for however long, month, two months, three months, a year, with a sensitive treatment and trying to kind of build that skin back up, would you say that you could definitely improve the skin if you really think yeah. it's possible? And you'll see an, an improvement in appearance too. So like pinkiness, any sort of ruddiness, reactivity, splotchiness will dramatically go down. Absolutely. Also it has to do with internal. So. A lot of weakness in the skin has to do with what we eat. An inflammation caused by, you know, for some people it's you know night color vegetables or night color you know products. Nightshades. Nightshades. Some people it's gluten. Some people it's there's a whole different you know group of different foods that cause irritation for people. Can I get one of you to do me a huge favor and give me some clean water? And a lot of it has to do with not necessarily internationally um, the colors of the food or where it is, but how it's processed too. So like something that we make here that may be hormonally filled and over processed, you could eat somewhere else or vice versa and have a different reaction, but that directly impacts the skin. So if you have somebody that's continually reacting in an unpredictable way, have them get their diet checked and their blood work done with the doctor go, have send them to an internist. Um, like the doctor's office that I work at in La Jolla. Activity on? Down? Uh, yeah, I still have a little bit of it. Yeah, you've got it. Oh, my my oh I scratched it. Yeah. Oh, we put some red dust to clean on it. Am I pinky anyone else? Nope, just that one area on your neck. I still feel a little, just a little. Here. On your brows? On my brows and around my nose. Oh, right here. I scratched it. Oh, you scratched that. Yeah, I just scratched it right here. Did you just scratch right there also? Mm -hmm. So like for her skin, you see right where she just scratched herself? Yeah. So she got skin, red right away. Yeah, she got super red right away and she scratched herself right here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the rescue cream on it because the rescue cream has evening primrose oil and cactus extract, which is one of the secret ingredients in it. And not secret anymore because I just told you. Cactus. Uh, but it's a wonderful emollient treatment cream. They actually send it, if you know anybody that's going through chemotherapy radiation for cancer, like oncology patients, they'll send it to them for free when you just call headquarters um, yeah, because it's so burn. restorative. So it burns healed from the inside out. So you just have to call headquarters and they'll send it over. Is that good to have on hands when you're walking? Yes. Sometimes at the end of the day, I'll just coat my hands with them and put my gloves on and then do my cleaning and everything in the clinic just to kind of like save my skin. Lip areas, noses when they crack, if you go skiing. There's no sun protection in it though, so just know if you're gonna put it on and go in the sun, because it has that petrolatum type of a feel, it's probably going to be more attracting. It will attract the sun more, but because of the ingredients in it, it's also going to be able to be a treatment post microdermabrasion, post dermaplaning, Post peel, rescue cream, because it has like that occlusive barrier type feel, but it does have the ability to be breathable because the ingredients, after you wax, if you lift skin, put it on immediately. Okay, how are you doing now? So that's just a good, um, instead of antibiotic going on, mm -hmm. use that instead. Definitely, definitely. And it's healthier than antibiotic going mm -hmm. Rescue. It's just a little tingly. It's, not, it's starting to calm down. So what did you put around her eyebrows? Anything? I was just using a little bit more water in that area. Did anybody use this on their skin? 
now? Okay. I just wanted to remind you to, to uh, <laughs> oh, I rinsed the brush already because it fell. Oh, you did? Uh -huh. Yay! Okay, thank you. All right, so we're going to do a, a very quick application and removal of the pumpkin so that you can see how we do that, and then we're going to do the HT mask. Because I want to give everybody time to be able to see the application, the removal of the HT mask, be able to ask questions, things like that. So how long would you normally leave this on? Seven to ten minutes. Okay. So this is typically a seven to ten minute enzymatic process. Do you have the pumpkin mask here? Mm -hmm. or, well, I don't know anymore. We used to. We had it on sale. here. We just saw it on sale. We don't. We don't. But I want it. it not that I want it. So it came in my kitchen. So we're going to leave this on for just a few minutes, not the whole full seven to ten minutes, because then we're going to move into the HT mask to give you all enough time to ask questions and to be able to see the application and removal, etc. So why do you do both of these masks? So the original, the first exfoliant was more of an exfoliation prep. So for somebody that, uh, unlike Trish, may have more haggard, rugged skin, things like that, you would want to do that initial chemical. The smoker. Mm -hmm. Somewhere where you really need to get in there, you just need to kind of you know, chip away at that, that rougher skin. For her, I was doing it just simply because it's her last day and like as a demonstration. She's gonna get a really good exfoliation from all of this because you know, she doesn't necessarily need all of it, but we're gonna do it in a safe way where she won't react negatively. And we'll avoid that area on this part of her, her shoulder-ish neck because of the, the redness, the irritation from the nails. And because of the spiciness of it, it will feel good for the client for you to put a cool eye. Oh, it feels good. I, yeah. How spicy is it? Does it feel pretty spicy? It's zero to ten. Scale. scale of one to ten. Oh, for me, a one. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, just, I like this mask. But for other people, I hear it's pretty intense. Uh, I think the other, the uh, the other um, one was more intense. The aloe vera one. That one was more intense to me. Why is that? Yes, the aloe vera is the most. That one is the most results-oriented peel. The aloe vera one. I tried the um, the bamboo peel. How long you leave it on? The bamboo peel, it felt good. It had green. Is that what? what That's a really it? nice one, too. So, is that chemical? What's the green? No, the bamboo cream peel is a manual exfoliant. The grains are homophobia beads. Ah. So, they're environmentally safe little wax homophobia beads. That was really nice. It had a cooling effect. Mm -hmm. It has lemongrass and some other really wonderful botanicals in it. All right, so while our lovely clinical subject is sitting here with the pumpkin mask, can I get one of the hot towels? It's on the bottom. If you happen to lick it off your face, uh, it would kill you. <laughs> uh -uh. It smells so edible. Her skin, and then we will prep it for the HT mask. Again, it's a heat cycle. It's going to be completely dark for Trish. We're going to protect her eyebrows, her hairline. We're putting wonderful serums underneath it and an eye treatment because it uses what technology? Anti thermal. Hyperthermal. 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 Hyperthermal.
thermal, thermal radiotherapy. Thank thermal, you. Thermal radiotherapy. Thermal. Exactly. So thermal radiotherapy thermal is the what? Is the science. Application of heat <laughs> to deep tissue. Right? And so that's that's the technique that we're going to use. So cool. So uh, what about steam? Would you ever recommend steam? Uh, during the hypothermal mask, no. You could use steam if you're doing extractions mm -hmm. before you do this part of the treatment. Okay, so uh, just, just be after. cautious because you don't want to do extractions and then do a chemical peel because, again, you're breaking the skin, and then those chemicals are going to go straight down. So where in the treatment, kind of what you just did, would you put extractions in, or would you just skip it and let the product do all the work? I would probably, if she had a lot of things to extract, I would do the aloe peel to kind of do that top layer. And then I would do the extraction, and then I would do the enzyme peel, and then I would go to the prepping for the mask. Because the enzymes are going to help to heal, as well as to do a little bit more exfoliation to keep the area clean too. Enzyme after extraction. And you can do the enzymes first too if you're only doing one exfoliation. So we're going to tone her skin with a tonic. Yeah. Yes. And in case she didn't like the smell of that, she can have the herbal toner too. <laughs> That's the secret to good skin, is just spritz yourself a toner all the time. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do the Flawless Skin Brightening Serum. Maybe my very last use of this. Is that the brightening one? The brightening serum? So this is the flawless brightening serum. Okay. Hang with me for a little bit more, guys. I promise. And ask questions too. If this is boring or you're tired. So brightening as far as lightening or yes, brightening, lightening, not bleaching. Okay, just lightening. Because yeah, I've used that. I've tried it, and I noticed that my it, it toned down my some of my freckles. Hyperpigmentation. What is, what is my hyperpigmentation. So there are dietary brightening peptides in it. And then there's of course there's the hydration element because you can't brighten without hydrating the skin. So there's the sodium hyaluronic. And then there's some other botanicals in there that are lighteners. Not in the not the same as like the so it's not light skin in the moisturizer. Is that what you're saying? Herbal toner. So this was the Papua eye gel that we just put around her eyes. And then remember we were saying that we needed to prep the skin, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the HD face cream. And because her skin is a little bit reactive right now, they just having done the aloe peel and then the pumpkin, we're going to do the honey almond mask, which is a de-stressing, firming and tightening mask with the HT mask. You can do, oh, you, friends, you can do just the HT base mask on the skin, or you can mix it with another mask. So ah. for her lovely benefit, what is this one you're putting on? This is the H, uh, the honey almond, honey almond mask. mask. And what is that? Mm -hmm. So it's for de-stressing and firming and tightening the skin. If you warm it up, it's really wonderful as well. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a combination with the activator, which has coconut oil in it. How would you do that? If you put it in like a little cup and a towel cap. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to mix the two of these together. It's going to be cool on her face. Now, why is it okay to do that on your own skin and then put it on her face? Um, I don't have any cups right here. It was just because I wasn't going to go rinse this out. Typically, when you're working on a client, you'd want to put it into a cup or you'd want to put it on. Like, as long as your hands are clean, I suppose it's okay. But state board wise, I'm pretty sure they would frown upon you using the back of your hand as a palette. So, what did you put on the honey? Honey almond and the HT mask, base mask. I mixed them together. So the base cream is like an activator. It helps to enhance the warming of the mask. Now when you do the HT base mask, it has the seaweed, it has magnesium, 
calcium, all sorts of ingredients in it that are going to activate the warming factor. But the base mask is like a catalyst for it. So it helps to increase the efficacy of, of the top mask that you're gonna be pouring on and making sure that those ingredients really work, that you get the full warming cycle. So you could, in theory, can do your HT mask without the base mask, but it doesn't, it doesn't get the same, excuse me, it doesn't raise the same level of heat, and so the efficacy is not as good. So you definitely want to use the base mask. You don't apply it in the neck and decollete? So I'm not going to do the HT mask on the neck and decollete, but you can. Okay. I'll apply this on it and then continue around so that she has the lovely hydration and those ingredients. Did you just and why aren't you going to do it? Why aren't you going to do it on the neck and decollete? It takes time. Because when you first start to do pour on masks, it's easier to learn if you have the delineation line to stop. And so I could take it all the way down onto the chest. It's safe to do it, but I wanted to show you kind of a basic pour on mask where you stop at the chin. And it may go a little over the chin depending on how much I mix up, but it's a good way to learn if you kind of quadrant it. The other reason is because when you go beyond the face, it's a lot easier for there to be movement in the body. So you have to work with your client a little bit more so they understand exactly the sensations of having that mask on their face. Because some people you'll see their pulse are just gonna to start to race once you get the mask on and they're not ex expecting it. So not having worked with her with this mask before, it's better to just stop at the chin. I will have gauze over her face, which is leverage. So if she wants me to take it off, she all of a sudden is like, okay, call an uncle. Like, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. Tap out, I can take it off right away, even before it completely hardens. But when you take it down the neck and the chest, there's more chance for there to be space under it where it doesn't have that attachment with the skin, so the heat cycle. So whenever you're learning for on mask, typically stopping at the chin, if it's possible, depending on how liquidy the mask is. Sometimes you pour it and actually, you need to go down here just for it to catch, depending on what it is, but for the HT mask, I like to teach where you just stop. Okay, now as you are putting the HT base mask and whatever other mask you've combined it with, and we're talking masks, we're not talking exfoliants at this point. We want to make sure that we have all those little hairs pulled away and that you've covered the eyebrows. Oh, this can, what other mask does this basically work well with? Soy apple, uh, the uh, arnica mask. It's beautiful with the arnica mask. If anybody has a lot of bruising, inflammation, you want to use the application of the heat to deep tissues to push that arnica deeper into the skin. Does ar arnica help with pain too, right? Mm -hmm. so so someone was like in the TMJ or something? TMJ, or if somebody had you know, some injectables and that was like a week ago and they're having trouble healing from it, like the bruising, you could come and do this because it's going to push everything deeper in without aggressing the skin. You're not gonna over aggress it. So now you're going to take your rescue cream or whatever else you decide to use as your little petrolatum base. And you're going to protect her lips. And then you can put this on the eyebrows, but I'll pass this around. Did I pass my rescue cream already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah. can I? And here's the lid for. And remember, friends, if you have little containers, you can take samples of any of the stuff that you want. Um, the only thing I say, please don't, is these little guys here, I'm going to run out of the, the eye stuff, so um, you can use a little bit for yourself, but please don't sample out a bunch into a cup. Everything else, you're welcome for me. Same with the Ginkgo Sum. This is going to go really quickly, so you can try it for yourself, but don't sample from the Ginkgo Sum of these little guys. But everything else, feel free. Okay, so now we've got... The face cleansed, the face has been exfoliated. We balance the pH, right? We've done an eye treatment and the Flawless Brightening Serum. The next step after that was to do what? The base, exactly. Who said that? Yay, the HT base. And then after the, with the HT base, we mixed another mask, right? Our goal for her was to do the firming, tightening, de-stressing. So we added that to it. So right now she's got that treatment on her skin. The next thing we want to do is to protect the hairline and to protect the eyes, especially the eyebrows, eyelashes. 
So we're going to take a facial tissue, and I'm going to undo her hair, and I'm going to make sure that her hair is back, and we're going to simply line it like this. If you have sandy strips from the cosmetology area, you can do that as well. And then the other side, we're going to do the same. Why is that? It's just to give it one more level of protection. I already put the mask on it, which is nice because it gives it a little bit of a slipping glide, so it's not going to adhere to the hair, but this is one more level of protection. And the next thing we're going to do is to take one of our 4 by 4s rinse it out really nicely, make sure it's clean, and we're going to do a wide butterfly. So instead of folding it in half and butterfly, we're going to do a wide butterfly. So when you do a wide butterfly, it's a little wet. When you do a wide butterfly, you're going to be able to protect the eye area and the lashes because you can pull it out, but then I can fold it up. So our lashes, our brows, everything is completely protected and covered. There's no way that the mask is going to adhere to any lashes or brows or hairline because everything has an extra layer over it, yet the heat can still penetrate without the product adhering to it and hardening and then removing. Good? How much okay. will this product in particular take to migrate? Not much, not much, because when you pour it on, it starts to harden right away. So I have my gauze. This is not the really wide medical gauze, but it's also not like the aesthetic wipe gauze because that one is a little bit too, um, salt pens uh, compacted. This one has enough space for the product to purge. Remember, we're going to put it on the skin and then this is what I use to lift it at the end. This is our way of getting it off her skin if she decides that she's not going to like it. So what I did right here is two thirds of the way down, I make a hole for her mouth. Regardless of whether the client wants to or not, I want you to always make a hole for the mouth with this particular mask. You can just make a hole for the nose, but please, especially as you're practicing, always make a hole for the mouth. So if anytime she needs to, she can open her mouth. I'm not going to cover the nose with the product. So the only thing she feels over her nose right now is the gauze. So she can breathe through her nose just fine. If it bothers her, you can make a hole in the gauze right her nose, but she can open her mouth at any time. She's not allowed to talk once you start pouring because if you talk, it moves the jaw muscles and it will break the seal between the pour-on mask and the skin. And we want to keep that seal for the full 15 minutes. She's gonna feel the heat cycle first and then on the outside, we'll start to see a little bit of condensation and then you'll be able to feel the heat cycle. So I want everybody to come up with, do you mind if they put their, hand, their hands on, on her face, okay? And I'll let you know when that, when that part comes. And then at that point, she's actually gonna be feeling cool inside. So it hits a peak and then it cools down. Good? Okay, mm -hmm. so the reason that I left one bowl without water in it is because I needed to have one malleable bowl to be able to pour, and the other one, this is where I'm gonna do my mixing, but you have to be able to move it around and mix. And I need, oh dear, pen depressor. Does anybody have a wooden stick? I'm sorry, I walked, I ran out of my supply. Thank you so much and it's your first time and you forget a step of protection, like you forget and it gets caught in part of her hair or it gets part of, caught on the lashes or on the brows. So you can take the hydrophilic oil grapeseed, wherever that one went, it's you know the container of the one-step cleansing oil, hydrophilic grapeseed, and you can work it up into, like from into the hair, and the hair will migrate to that hydrophilic grapeseed and it will loosen to be able to, to release it but it's very hard to do that when it's this, that. It's very hard to do it when it's this close to the face because if you pull it up, the hair is probably going to come off before you can actually get it up there too much. One other thing, if somebody has a beard, work around the beard, cover the beard as if you're covering eyelashes, a hairline, things like that. And if they have a good amount of Bella's facial hair, sometimes you'll find that it will get stuck in the mask and when you're pulling the mask off, it's a little bit like a waxing procedure. Mm -hmm. So if they have a good amount of hair, if it's somebody that has you know, more of a, an ethnic background where they, like some Scandinavian clients of mine have a lot more hair and they typically come for dermaplaning. If I didn't dermaplane their skin and then they did this, it's possible that that extra, you know what I'm talking about when people mm -hmm. have a little yeah. bit more? Yeah. yeah. So, and I actually had a Brazilian client that I couldn't even see the hair on her face 
But when I pulled it off, like you heard the hair, wow. little Bill's hair snapping. And she goes, Wah! <laughs> and she goes, I was loving it until that point. And then we worked the hydrophilic oil up and it ended up being fine. Um, and she said she would do it again. But it's, you know, there's, there's things that you'll hit, you'll come across in, cl in clinic where, you know, your teacher isn't there and you're gonna be like, okay, so now what do I do? Oh, that's great. Um, troubleshooting on your own. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> No, I was just, um, what does this accomplish besides the thermal radiotherapy? Right, so basically we're pushing the, the products from underneath, deeper into the skin. It has some exfoliation benefits as well. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, it helps with, you know, some brightening. Mm. And the, <laughs> the alginate properties help to nourish the skin as well. Mm. So, so there's algae. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's the seaweed in it, oh, and then magnesium and calcium right. and some that's other right. botanicals. All right, if you guys want to come and feel it, she's probably going to start cooling in a little bit. It's not quite, um, not quite <laughs> so it's warm. as wet, yeah, it's not quite as wet on the outside as it will be in a few moments, but you can just feel like it's in the palm of your hand, it's starting to get warm. It'll be on for 15 minutes. It's warm because it's cold. It's like plaster. Mm -hmm. Like clay. I wouldn't say room it's like clay on my <laughs> But you're doing great. Wow. <laughs> it's like, uh, so weird. It's like impression material. Like, push her. Okay, dental. Okay, hi, So it's like, I wonder if she's like, yeah, how we're touching her. She can yeah. hear you. <laughs> Lucy, you Is everybody to do doing okay? Face? Yeah. Anybody yeah. have questions? All for it. In the treatment room. Yeah. <laughs> questions about this? Questions about other products? Questions about anything? Anything Ciobatana related? Anything that you've wondered? Anything you've not liked at all? Had trouble removing things? Have you tried the papaya enzyme peel? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's so what we talked about that last time. Yeah, yeah, so we have to cleanse it to get it off really well. Because yeah. that'll the bamboo cream peel, if it ever hardens yeah. on there, just go ahead and use a cleanser to remove it. It's not going mm -hmm. to, to deter from the effects of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice because then it'll, you'll use it and then keep adding water to loosen it, mm -hmm. and then it will just come off with the cleanser just really, really nicely. Since we didn't have the um, the grapeseed oil, mm -hmm. we just used the cleansing um, pre -cleanse. milk as a pre-cleanse, mm -hmm. so we just did it twice. Yeah, so that's, I guess that's okay yeah, too. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The difference with this is it this you can use on every single skin type, and it breaks apart dirt, debris, makeup, sunscreen, all of that, and so when you use the one-step cleansing oil, you get a little bit more of a cleansing action. Mm -hmm. Because when you emulsify it, the avocado oil is a really nice cleanser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, any other questions? Any? I don't think we have that here. No, but you have the Dermalogica pre cleanse. Yes. So you oh, use yes. that in a very similar way. Oh. It just has a different smell and texture. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there was li this little bottle in our sample kit. Um, controlling lotion? Is it? The con is it controlling lotion? A papaya controlling lotion? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's the one you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So you oh, mix okay. that with the papaya powder. Okay. Do we have papaya powder? I don't think we have papaya powder. So the papaya powder is uh, just like the powder that we use to make this, like this type of powder, but it has its papaya enzyme. So it's activated when you add the controlling lotion to it. Mm -hmm. But you can also activate this just with regular water. It's just not going to be as strong of an exfoliation. So this is an enzymatic exfoliation. You add the papaya controlling lotion, this one. You guys have a tiny little bottle of it, mm -hmm. right? You add this to this, and that's full strength. If you do half this, half water with the papaya powder, then that's going to be like a medium strength. Mm -hmm. And if you do just water with it, or if you even add anti-ozone to it also, that's going to be a lighter strength exfoliation. All this is enzymatic exfoliation. Mm -hmm. So that's the, oh, I'm sorry. That, that's the only purpose of the papaya controlling lotions to add on to the... No, it actually is a skin um, cleanser as well. Oh. So if you have congested skin, just like the tea tree prep, you can use it as a toner for acneic skin, oily skin, congested oh, okay. skin. The papaya cleansing lotion can be... So let's see. Papaya controlling lotion. Oh. Yeah, they don't tell you. 
The product knowledge pages that Ms. Suzanne has will give you the product, every active ingredient, a list of every single ingredient in there, and then the usages. So for the papaya one, those products break it down into mild, medium, and more intense, and give you the quantities, and same with the HT map, there's a page. So, and I also have a Dropbox um, link I can send, that I send to her as my name already. But then you can just go to that Dropbox link, even if it's just on your iPhone, and pull up every single product in all three lines. Um, how much does a service like the HT Maps cost to, yeah. um, if you were to go somewhere and get it done, how much would it run? That's a really good question. So my typical answer to that is it's going to be based on the market share dollars that are driven in that area. So let's say your facials are $95 for a signature facial. This would be about $125, $130. It's going to take you a little bit longer. It's going to be more of an add-on treatment. If you have facials that are 100, 110, this is gonna be at $150 treatment. So it's just gonna be about 30, 25 to 30 to 40 dollars more, not just because of the products. It's that and your time and the scale that you're you know gonna need for <clears throat> And it started to get cooler inside. Oh. A little bit? Not yet? No? Okay. While we're waiting for it to get a little cooler inside for her, if there's paperwork you need to do or get something ready, I know I'm supposed to let you go at 12.30, um, but I want you to be able to, to see her when she comes out. So we got about five minutes. I had a question. Yes. I was just going to say, you said you could use the HT base on its own. Did you say you could use it on its own without you, the You can because it's a really hydrating. Yeah, would that not, or would it not do anything? Mm -hmm. It would be fine. It would just be as a as like a cleaning mask. So, yeah, we have mask. that, so we don't have the powder, and I was wondering if we can use it. So. Yeah, typically it's not, it's not, <laughs> when, when, um, Ms. Pilot? When she had ordered that, I was assuming yeah. that she was getting a bunch of those. And so, yes, you can use it. You could use it with something else, but really it's meant to be specifically okay. with these. So hopefully she'll get a case of these. I will leave you that one. I'm going to throw her bed on this one. I'll leave this for you girls so you can play with those. Maybe when I give it to Mrs. Yeah, so she can do that. Yeah, she can do that. Um, now, the other flip side of it is you don't have to have the face cream in order to do this mask, but it's better if you do it. Yeah. Oh, so that's a sample of the glacier salt. For anybody that's really interested in body treatments, spa treatments, things like that, this is a salt that you'd mix with the hydrophilic oil, grapeseed, one step cleansing oil, and use it as a body exfoliation. Wow. It's cooling now? Okay. So let's flip off the lights. Okay, so we're going to use, remember the gauze is our leverage, and she's going to start to move her jaw, and so mask is going to pop up, and enough so it's comfortable for her skin. And we're going to remove the residue. Do you want to turn on just that light yeah. thing? So we don't gradually bring you back into the light. But it really, friends, it does make a difference. I know with all treatments, you may not have control of the environment, but please consider the lights with regards to this treatment. It makes a big difference for the client. All right, so we're going to now put a little, a little bit of the 
Ginkasome Serum, which is the daytime anti-aging serum that we have on her skin. We'll put a little bit of another hydrator and some of the Flawless Tinted Moisturizer. And that's about it because we don't want to put too much on her skin because she is so well hydrated. Have you ever tried to put moisturizer on and it just doesn't go into the skin and it just kind of pills? Mm -hmm. That's what would happen if you try to put too much on after this treatment. Oh, it's still going. Wow, this is, really wow, this is a long one. Wow, your skin's so bright. <laughs> beautiful. So this is the Ginkasome right? Serum. Yeah. Sorry. So... She has a little upper nose. We, just where do we get the information? You said the handout, but what about a website? Or mm -hmm. There's all a drop box that has what all of in the in information about each of the products. And then we have webinars once a month, as well as in-person in seminars. Mm -hmm. For the webinar, you can just log on with oh, your computer. The webinars. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's some uh, and are those recorded free? Or, oh, the webinars are free. And then you'd also get 10% off of the wholesale price for attending a webinar, which is nice too. Yeah. Are they usually in Very nice. The webinars you can just log on from home oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's through your computer. The seminars are in the San Diego headquarters. Yeah, seminars. <laughs> How long do they take? The webinar is an hour. Uh, the seminar is usually all day, like 10 to 2 or 9 to 3. So we try to get you out of there before too much traffic. It's the getting in there in the morning because it's right, right. by the 8055 merge that's... Right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the Flawless Tinted Moisturizer. You'll see as I apply it, it's going to melt into her skin so the color will match hers. And I mixed it with the Light Skin Renewal Moisturizer. It's a 20. Yeah, so you'll want to put a little more on, but I just want this to soak in first. We don't want to add too much to your skin right now because it's very well hydrated. So, all right, friends. So, oh, everybody left. Okay. Oh, wow. Not everybody. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, Okay, so I'm going to sit you up in just a moment, and I would love like for the, baby skin. the lovely ladies that have stayed, if you could just tell them a little bit about it from your experience, if you were in their shoes, what you would want to hear from the person that just went through this, so that you can learn a little bit more about the treatment, about, It turned pink. It was white, and then oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Right, beautiful. And did you hear? You don't have to drown it in the sink. I mean, you just yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Wow. Yeah. 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 Ye
also made it a lot easier because of all, all the yeah. white paint and everything. Yeah. The, the four by fours. Rather than sponges. Well, those are yeah. Or the those glass. are better four by fours. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. The ones but I just mean, whatever she <laughs> is, even the, because I'm a sponge person, and I would think that that would be a bit much. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe the mitts. Let's give her a hand. Thank you so much. Yeah.